In this video, we are going to be discussing the second type of CSS called internal CSS. It can also be called embedded CSS. So both those terms, internal and embedded, impl uh, uh, sorry, apply to the same type of CSS. It's just a matter of what book you happen to pick up. So we've already watched the video on inline CSS, and we know with inline CSS, we can format our document, but we have to add that formatting to every tag. When we look at internal or embedded CSS, we're going to see a step up in terms of efficiency because now we are going to be able to format for the entire page rather than having to add the formatting instructions in every tag. So I went ahead and started a uh, HTML page for us, and I put some sample text on here just so you wouldn't have to hold on while I was typing text. But essentially, we have a number of tags. We have H1 tags, which is this line. And oops, I thought that I had done this. Sorry, when I put that sample text in there, it looks like I forgot to actually uh, apply the proper tags to it for there. So we've got two heading ones, two heading twos with the YCSS and here, another paragraph tag and a list. We wanted to have multiple occasions of all of these tags so you could see right away that these rules were applying to the entire page. Internal or embedded CSS goes between the head tags. So anywhere here between lines three and line six, we could go ahead and put in our chunk of internal CSS. I prefer to write my opening and closing tag first, just so that I don't then, um, you know, forget to write the closing tag later. So here I've written my open style tag and my closing style tag. So let's go ahead and start off with our H1s. The syntax is a little bit different here. I'm going to go ahead and apply a background color. Let's go with this dark green and a text color. We will go with a, a red shade. And obviously, if you had your hex color codes, um, you could type in the, the hex color codes themselves as opposed to using the selection tool there. So that is it. And we can see that both of our H1s have gone ahead and used, applied this formatting. We didn't have to put it in twice, so it saved us a lot of time. We're more likely to avoid errors because I could, and I'm going to go ahead and use the CSS styles panel for this, uh, but I could just make my changes here. In fact, it might have made more sense if I had made a <laughs> change that had a little bit of a bigger difference from the reds. You could, there you go, clearly see that we've actually changed this and the one change takes place throughout the whole page. And as a result, the page itself becomes more consistent because every H1 is formatted the same. Every H2 is formatted the same. Uh, so we don't need to worry about putting in a typo or having inconsistencies that we end up having a, a page that looks like a, a co cohesive whole from a design perspective. So over here on the left, Dreamweaver has changed some of the, um, you know, just changed the alignment and layout of our CSS. But essentially the syntax, and I'll go ahead and write it down here at the end for you is just a selector 
followed by the bracket, and then the property and its value. So this is similar to the syntax, and I'm just going to indent this for readability purposes, but it's similar to the syntax that we saw with so why am I, I'm having some problems, it's okay, I'm going to just ignore that, I think my space bar is sticky a little bit, um, but this is the syntax down here, then I just have the selector followed by the property and then a colon and the value, these properties are the exact same uh, ones that we had for inline CSS, they're the same ones that are on that list of all of our properties that I told you in the last video was linked to through Blackboard. We've just added the selector, which is the tag, or um, it could actually be something else, but for now we'll just think about it as the tag where these formatting commands, my properties and values, are going to apply. And I call this entire thing, the, the, this whole portion that is now selected, if you look at the bottom, these last three lines, I call that a rule, R-U-L-E. So if I refer to a CSS rule, we're talking about this combination of properties and values for an individual selector. I can add these through the CSS styles panel. If you notice now, if I use the drop down arrow, right here under style, I see that I have a style defined for H1. I'm going to go ahead down to the bottom of the styles panel, and this time I'm gonna format my H2 tags without, um, I'm gonna format them without doing it manually, I'm gonna do it through Dreamweaver. I'm gonna click on the new style. In my dialog box, I have a variety of choices. For right now, I'd like to just pick tag. We can certainly talk about these other types of, you know, other choices for the selector, which was the first part of that rule. This area here, the selector, can be multiple things, but for right now, let's just go ahead and pick tag. And I could pick a tag. It's defaulted to paragraph, but I already decided I wanted to pick H2. And then if you notice at the bottom, it says this document only, that is correct. That's what we want to go with for this internal or embedded CSS. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now I have a dialog box where I can pick values for my properties. So font family, font size, font style, color, we saw that already. These are all the properties. We've picked our selector was H2. Our properties are all of the things that we see as we flip through this CSS rule dialog box. And I can specify values. So I could say here that I wanted my H2s to be this aqua color. Maybe I want to change their background color. We'll go with this, and I'm just picking a few things so that you can, um, in fact, maybe I'll end there. It's just so that it's visually apparent that we change something. Notice over here on the code side that it's starting to write the rule for us. It's already gone ahead and put in our selector and the, the brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit okay. And we'll see that it's wrapped up that rule for us over here on the left between lines 12 and 15. And I can see the formatting take place here. I can also edit it in the CSS styles panel. So I could go ahead and make new choices here. Or if I wanted to make a choice for something that wasn't, um, that wasn't already chosen. So I only chose two properties, background color and color to change. Let's say I wanted to choose font family. I could do that in the CSS styles panel. I will go ahead and pick a sans serif font just so we clearly see a difference. You can see that 
sans serif difference there. Or I could just double click on the rule and open up that dialog box again. So just to refresh how we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and add a CSS rule for the paragraph tags. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the new CSS rule. I, this was down here at the bottom of the CSS styles panel. And if you've lost us or are wondering where I got that, I, I got the CSS styles panel under the window menu. So I've gone ahead and clicked on new CSS rule. I'm going to choose tag. I'm going to pick, I said we were going to pick my paragraph tag. I'm going to keep it at this document only. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I can fill out the dialog box with only the particular properties that I'm in, where I'm interested in changing things. So maybe I want to increase the size of my text. This is a great example of what we've been talking about repeatedly, which is the difference between a logical style, which would be extra small to larger. So this would all be a logical style. And a physical style, 9 through 36, for instance, would be an example of a physical style. Now, you can type in you know, values that are not within this selection box. It's just giving you the, you know, the most uh, likely ones. Also, there are CSS properties that are not included in this dialog box. There are some things that we, we need to, um, we would actually need to put in manually because they're just not in the dialog box that comes in with Dreamweaver. And that's why it's good to just know this idea of how are the rules formed. They're formed with the selector, a semicolon, the property, a colon, the value, a semicolon, and then the closing bracket. Okay, so let me just go ahead and change our font color. We'll make it uh, yellow. I guess we're not actually going to use this page. This is really just to see a, a visual difference. So again, we see that I add this once for the paragraph tag, and it changes everything on the page. Internal or embedded CSS, the way that we're looking at the CSS right now, is definitely the preferred way to format our, um, the preferred way to format our, I'm sorry, I, I think I got distracted. There's some background noise here. Um, internal and embedded is definitely a preferred way to style over inline, although it is not the most preferred way. The most preferred way would be to use external CSS, which is what we're going to talk about in the next video. So just to summarize here, in this video we looked at internal CSS, and internal CSS, which is also called embedded, is a way of adding our CSS so that it applies to the entire page. This allows us to not have to repaste the CSS or re, you know, add the CSS to every tag. I only do it once in this style section, which is in between the head tags of the page, and it applies to everything on the page. So I'm less likely to make errors, and the formatting on my entire page is more likely to be consistent. So I'll go ahead and end this video now, and we can uh, come back with another video on external CSS.